sign here and here. Yeah. Try downloading the BX25 protocols and... Hey, hey hold on. No. <laughs> no, not you, Mr. Stevens. Can you hold the line one second? Cheers. What was that? Just the insurance form for your new car. What new car? The one Lee authorised last week. Well, he never mentioned anything to me. Yeah, let me look at that form. Why didn't he tell me about this at my appraisal? I think it came to him as an afterthought. He obviously thinks you deserve it. I mean, since he got promoted, you've been doing a lot of his old job. Oh, very touching. Hey, you don't have to take it. Hey, two litres, 16 valve. Of course I'll take it. It's just... It lacks the personal touch. Oh, yeah. Still, I can live with that. What happens next? Well, you order the car you want from your local dealer. Admin will sort out the rest. Hey, great. Well, thanks, Lee. Oh, thanks, Susan, for telling me. It's nice to know I'm wanted. Oh, you're wanted, Bob. Believe me, you're wanted. Uh, hi, Mr. Stevens. Um, yeah, now, where were we? BX25 protocols, yeah. Look, for the last time, there is nothing I can do to help you. You'll just have to wait till one of them gets back next week. Well, I'm sorry, but... Who needs them? Hi. I'm John Wood. Oh, hello. Yes, um, I know who you are. Uh, you must be Jackie. Pleased to meet you. Um, can I help you with those? Uh, no, thanks. I do my own photocopy. Ooh, very democratic. I could get used to these transatlantic ways. <laughs> well, to be honest, I do have an ulterior motive. What's that? Well, uh, it's a little technique that I call MBWA. MBWA. Management by walking about. <laughs> Tells you more than any report can. <laughs> For instance, the phone call just now, was that a customer? Ah, him. Yes. Well, most of these calls are handled by the customer services, but they put the difficult ones through to me when Brenda and Rebecca are away. Can't Mike handle them? Mike? The only customer calls he takes, the ones inviting him to play golf. <laughs> no, besides, he's away this week, too. Mike is away? I'm supposed to be taking him through his appraisal this afternoon. Uh, Jenny, would you mind coming here for a moment, please? Sorry. Mike's in Geneva at an exhibition with Brenda, and Rebecca's in Birmingham. Did you know that Mike was abroad this week? Well, yes, I thought he told you. That's why he couldn't do his appraisal. No, he didn't tell me. Is it all right if I take that? It'll only be another moaning customer. Sure, get it, yeah. Hello? John, uh, there's obviously been a breakdown in communication somewhere. I, I should have told you. No, Mike should have told me. I think I know why he didn't, too. Look, I, I am sorry, but there is nothing I can do about it. Yeah, you'll have to phone back next week. Yes, next week. All right? Thank you. Goodbye. Do you think that he went to Geneva in order to avoid his appraisal? Well, we'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, what concerns me more at the moment is the phone calls from these customers. It's crazy, I know, but we've got two exhibitions on at the same time and all our sales managers are out. Well, it's hardly the customer's fault, is it? Yes, well, what can I do about it? I've got my own workload to get through and all these whinging calls are hardly helping. Well, we can't carry on treating customers this way. Well, actually, I'm seeing Nigel later today. He's running a mail out to all our clients and I want to do a customer care survey. Do you know we haven't carried one out for about 18 months? It's a good idea, but it doesn't solve the immediate problem, does it? Which is Rebecca's desk? Um, that one, but she's in Birmingham till tomorrow. Uh, get customer services to put through any complaints they can handle through to this desk. Okay, now you carry on planning the survey. I'm going to start talking to some customers myself. I'll get you some coffee. Uh, I think I've got his number here somewhere. Sam, yeah, all right. I'll call back through this. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. No, not you, Mr. Stevens. Look. How do we in customers and influence people? Like the outfit. Image is important, Jenny. Oh, absolutely. Right now, it's the company's image I'm more concerned with. Look, I want to get a true picture of what our customers think about Redware. So I've drafted a questionnaire. 
Now, it's only a page, but I'd like it to go out as soon as possible. And I understand you've done these for Mike in the past. Well, that's right. We can send it to the same customers. Here's the list we sent out last time. Oh, just as I thought. This is over 18 months old. Well, yeah. About that. But we've got more customers than this. Oh, that's Mike's list. He only mails out to customers we do a lot of business with. He says it's not worth dealing with a small fry. First Incorporated, European Logistics. But this is a very selective sample. It's the way Mike likes to do it. It makes for easy analysis using a controlled sample. And uh, who does the analysis? Well, Mike does. OK, Nigel, this is what we're going to do. I'd like that survey to go out to our complete customer base, both current and old. Go back uh, three years. Three years? That's right. And uh, get one of your assistants to go through the files and identify the companies that we pitched to where we didn't get the business. And here's a diskette with a special questionnaire for them. OK. But Mike's not going to like it. Well, before Mike went to Geneva, he specifically told me that he wanted to be judged by the customer. Now, oh, what was it he said? Oh, that's right. Jenny, the customer is king. Well, if that's what Mike wants, we'd better get on with it. But why should these companies bother to reply? I mean, I know these guys. They're not the sort to fill in questionnaires. OK, so what incentive would make them fill them out and send them back? Perhaps a hot air balloon trip with champagne. That should get their interest. <laughs> Only if they could bungee jump out of the basket. <laughs> or um, uh, the theatre vouchers or the ballet. Uh, give their wives a treat. Hmm? Give me two days, Jenny. I'll get you your list and a prize. Or tickets for classical music concerts. Or a weekend break in the country. <sighs> uh, OK. You choose. <laughs> Just remember, I'm counting on you to get those responses for me. Trust me. Ballet vouchers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see. No, I, I agree we could have handled that better. Yeah, um, would you tell me exactly what the problem is? I see, yeah. Uh, yeah, look, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the solution will be, but it sounds to me like incompatibility between the software that you install from us and the particular routines that you're running. Sure. Now, yeah, you have my word that I will get a... Now you have my word I will get an engineer under this today, and you will get a call back within 24 hours. Sure. Yeah? My name is Wood. John Wood, yeah, I'm the director of the company. My personal pledge, that's right, yeah. Within 24 hours, yeah. May, pardon? Uh, may I say how, how sorry I am that you've been uh, inconvenienced? Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Hmm, you seem to know how to handle these people. Years of experience. If I can't handle customers properly, how can I expect the rest of you to? Why bother? Rebecca will be back tomorrow. They can wait. Oh, they can't. There are plenty of other software houses they can go to. What is worse, they will badmouth us. Tell their friends, their colleagues. On average, a person who's had a bad experience with a company will tell at least nine others. Ungrateful bunch. People just love to complain. See, you resolve a complaint, they'll come back and do business with you. You leave it in the pending tray, it'll turn into lost orders. OK, I accept that they pay our wages. But the ones that moan, they're only a small proportion after all. I hate to say it, but wasn't Mike right to go to Geneva? Isn't it more important for us to get new customers than worry about the handful that complain? It costs five times as much to recruit a new customer as it does to keep an old one with decent customer care. Now, some companies have doubled their profits simply by holding on to 5% more of their old customers, the handful you call winders. Yes, but... They take so much effort to keep happy. Well, look upon a complaint as a piece of free market research. Now, these people are actually bothering to spend money and call us up and tell us where we're going wrong. That would cost us a small fortune to get that kind of research. Hmm. So, when people complain, they're actually doing us a favor. 
in a way, yeah. Hmm. There's another one to be grateful for. Thank you. Hello, John Wood speaking. How may I help you? Ah, Watermarket. Hi. I wonder if you could put me through to one of your salesmen. Yep, thanks. Hello. Oh, hi. I called your company earlier. I spoke to someone about organising a test drive for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, they told me to speak to someone in sales. Oh, yeah. Well, you are sales, aren't you? Yeah. Well, good. We're making some progress. Now, my name's Bob Devlin. Pardon? Devlin. Can you spell that? D-E-V-L-I-N. Are you sure? What do you mean, am I sure? Look, have you got a car I can test drive or not? Mm, which one do you want? The 2 litre 16 barrel. 2 litre 16. No. Nope. Boss is driving it down to Kansas as we speak. Won't be back till Monday. Your MD's taking the demonstrator to France for a week. That's right. Oh, pardon me, I'm just a customer. <laughs> well, I hope he enjoys his trip, mate, because he's not going to enjoy my custom. But you like that, then? Yeah, and au revoir to you, too. So how's he doing? Hmm, not bad. He's managing about eight calls an hour, and he hasn't lost his temper yet. Hmm, perhaps he'd like to do it full time. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Not at all. Hello, John Wood speaking. How may I help you? Mrs. Waits. Certainly put her through. Yeah. Mrs. Waits. Yeah, John Wood speaking. Nice to talk to you again. Uh, may I ask you uh, why you're calling customer services? Uh, surely you have one of our key account managers looking after you. Miss Carlton. My mistake, I'm sorry. No, uh, yes, this is her line, but she's away at the moment. I just happened to be passing the desk and I picked up the phone. Right, yeah. how's the project going? I'm sorry? They're not. You're having trouble with... Jean Waits, right. isn't she the IT director of the local authority? That big new account we won recently? Mm. I wonder what the top brass is doing, phoning Rebecca. Well, well, whatever it is, you can be sure it's trouble. Thank you for your patience. Bye-bye. All right, that's it. Things seem to be getting a little off the rails around here. We've had this client one month. Already we're screwing up the account. Look. Tell Rebecca when she gets back from her exhibition. But I want to see her about the basics of customer care. With Nigel, he's late. Well, you know, production, they're always late. Oh, sorry, Lee. I keep on forgetting you're running that lot as well these days. Yeah, well, life was a bit easier when it only had software to worry about. Hmm. What's it like working with Nigel and his band of metal bashers? No, it's a bit strange, really. It's like working with a different race. Must be pretty grim. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, but they do have a wavelength which sometimes really blows my mind. They get so involved with the pieces of circuit board. I tell you, if there was a fire while the rest of us are running to the exits, they'd still be tweaking bits of Meccano. Bizarre. How are you coping with it? Well, not that bad. I haven't seen you touch a keyboard for weeks. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I have. In fact, I haven't seen any new code from you since you took over production. Bob, you can't run a department from a computer screen. I guess not. Now that you're a hotshot manager. Oh, thanks for the new car, by the way. Only what you deserve, Bob. Ah, oh, Nigel, come in. You're late. Sorry, Lee. I was just waiting for this to come off the line. Is this what I think it is? The very first production prototype. Oh, goody. A new widget. Can't wait. Oh, sorry. You just carry on. Isn't she a beauty, Lee? Look at that moulding. This is fantastic. What is it, then? It's an integrated modem in a chip. So, they've been, they've been around for months. Oh, yeah. Careful! Well, it's only a chip stuck to a bit of board. Only a chip? For your information, Mr. Software Wizkid, this is the very first miniaturised modem we've ever produced. 
It's absolutely perfect for the new generation of palm-top computers. Well, excuse me for not getting down on my knees and bowing before it. I've got some software to write. This is a real beauty. That new integrated circuit plotter is fantastic. Well, it wants to be. It costs nearly half a million. Half a million? You spent half a million on a machine for production? That's right. The first fruits of Softex's new investment in our production capability. No, listen to me, Lee. Are you still in there? <laughs> listen. They've invaded your body. Virgin Atlantic prides itself on taking good care of its customers, claiming to offer a service different from the rest. For the BBC Two series Secret Service, broadcaster and journalist Dylan Winter put this claim to the test when he travelled economy class in New York with a hidden camera. Thank you. Well, she was very nice, but she didn't send me to the left. That's the way to upper class. Uh oh. Looks as though economy is going to be full. It's a bit of a slot to sit in, isn't it? <laughs> Perhaps Virgin's famous seat back video will distract me from the growing cramp in my legs. I can't seem to get very much except the captain's voice. Is it possible to get this one here? Not the moment. Patience, patience. I know it's seldom found in men. Absolutely. On occasion. That's not everyone. But then this isn't the scripted civility you usually get on a plane. Perhaps push of the button. I don't know how long they're supposed to take to answer the call light. Maybe they haven't noticed it yet. It's about four minutes since I pressed the button. It's like sitting in a restaurant when the waiter refuses to look your way. About five and a half minutes. I don't think the cabin crew have seen my call light. Perhaps I should catch somebody's eye when they next walk past. <laughs> Finally, somebody did stop by, but only to collect the empties. Can I have another tomato juice, please? still on actually and she's told me that I'll have to wait for a little while for my drink so I will turn the call light off but it was about they ignored it for eight minutes and then still really didn't answer it Virgin scored very well overall but there has to be an answer to that problem of the call light Richard Branson invited Dylan Winter to join him on one of these flights he was keen to see the hidden camera video and talk about the service, in particular, the call sign problem. On to the things that went wrong on board. Uh, I'll just try and catch the attention of the uh, air hostess. Well, they do work very hard in the economy. Overstretched? Uh, I, I suspect um, that's a possibility. Um, I mean, we actually... Uh, the, 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 our girls have been... Uh, voted, I think, three years in a row the best cabin crew in the world, and, and I think they're extremely good, they're extremely friendly, and, uh, and I think the one, the one thing that Virgin, I, I very, very rarely have complaints about is, is the staff on Virgin. I still want an answer to the problem of the call light, and I know I'm not the only one. Dear Miss Morris, on Thursday the 14th of January, I travelled to New York JFK via your flight number VS003. I would like to bring the following incidents to your attention. Virgin's cabin crews get together from time to time to answer their passengers' complaints. Today, they've got a long letter about the call light. Overall, we found the cabin service very basic and the attitude of the stewardess lacking in the basic customer service requirements. There was no sign of any cabin crew in our section for some considerable time. My friend pressed the call light to order some coffee. After 30 minutes wait and no response, she went to the galley for a comment slip or survey form. You pressed it, probably, when they're out on duty-free. Our duty-free service can take up to two hours because we're so busy. And so Especially they're walking on. around and they're doing drinks and they're doing this, that and the other as well. A group starts at the 
at the back of the aircraft groups up at the front and they meet in the middle. And this area in the middle, if they were sitting there, if they're ringing their call bell, there's not crew around that area because everybody's busy doing duty free at either end. So it is visible, you know, you could actually say that they probably had to wait. 30 minutes, I think, it's is a long, long time. time. Ideally, we'd have somebody in the galley just waiting for call bells. Call bell, to go yeah. But you can't, you can't afford that. Yeah. Um, no, I like it. You haven't got the space. You'd need about 30 yeah. flight attendants on a, yeah. on a 747. We'd be falling over each other. When you're talking about the mass movement of people across the Atlantic, and they want to go as cheap as possible. We've got to, we've got to, your job is really to make sure they get across there safely, isn't it? What we have to do is match our, is, is match or beat the other airlines on price. Um, but the, 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 you know, then if if if, if, if there are two tickets which are similar priced, then if the public know that Virgin's better and it's got the seatback videos, then uh, they'll they'll fly Virgin. Hi, Rebecca. I'm glad I caught you. John. How was your trip to Birmingham? The exhibition? Yeah, it was fine, thanks. We had more customers on the stand than last year. I think it went pretty well. Great. Customers, yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. Actually, I've just been watching Module 9 of 20 Steps. It's all about customer care. Right, yeah. Uh, I took some of the overspill while you were away from the calls to customer services yesterday. You did? Poor you. That is dedication beyond the call of duty. Well, I don't see it that way. I mean, customers should be our first duty. Well, of course. Naturally, I was only saying... One of the calls was from Gene Waits, you know, the local government contract. Gene Waits called the complaints hotline. <laughs> well, why should an IT director with a multi-million pound budget call customer services? Well, she was looking for you. I happened to be taking calls at your desk at the time. What did she want? Well, to complain, really. She feels they're not getting the kind of service that they should expect. Uh, to, in fact, it was a common theme among, oh, 20 odd calls I received at your desk yesterday. I see. Uh, I, I can't expect you to carry the can for every customer complaint that comes in, but uh, I was kind of surprised that a client as new and as important as Gene Waits should feel it necessary to complain. But I can't understand it. I thought everything was going fine on that account. You thought? How come you didn't know? Now, if you're manager of the account, you should be on top of everything that's going on. I agree. But I assumed Brenda had it all under control. That's what she told me before she left for Geneva. Rebecca, I was prepared to give you the benefit of the doubt, but you really cannot shift the blame onto Brenda. You are the key account manager. Hang on. Who told you that? What do you mean, who told me that? Jean Waits is your client, right? She stipulated you take the account right from the start, correct? Yeah, sure. Originally. But when Brenda got her promotion, Mike put her onto the account. Mike took you off the account? That's right. About a month ago. But what I can't understand is, why should Jean Waits call me? and not Brenda.